Thank you so much for everybody joining us. It's uh, fantastic to see so many people and excited uh, for our webinar about uh, the WISC model uh, from practice to application. Um, and uh, before we get started, just wanted to share a little bit about the American School Health Association. Uh, Emily, if you can advance us. I uh, just wanted to ground us in the uh, mission of the American School Health Association um, and to transform all schools into places where every student learns and thrives. And I think as we think about uh, schools that are gearing up to go back um, and the challenges they are facing um, and the need to make sure that we are meeting, uh, creating those environments, uh, whether they're going to be virtual or in person or some combination thereof and other things we haven't even thought about maybe, um, but that we make sure we keep a focus on keeping our young people um, healthy, that they're learning and thriving um, in the work that we can do together uh, through the association uh, to make sure that we're maintaining those safe and healthy environments and um, caring adults in a coordinated system of support. Next slide. Uh, just a quick uh, plug. Um, if you are a member, you know and enjoy and appreciate these sources, resources. And if you're not, uh, this is the subtle plug, not so subtle actually, um, to please join. Um, the, members, the membership benefits include uh, the Journal of School Health Health, uh, peer-reviewed index professional journal. Um, did you receive uh, continuing education credits? Those are free for members. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit at the end as well, uh, as well as getting discounts on uh, selected publications from the AAP and others, um, and really a really strong uh, network of information, expertise, um, and access to each other, a really strong community uh, that helps us uh, and focus on the work and, and focus on supporting young people. Uh, some upcoming things. Um, we are going virtual. So September 30th and October 1st uh, will be the annual conference. Um, so please be on the lookout for information about that and uh, registering. It should be a, a really um, important time for us to connect um, and get in touch base on, on how we are doing and how our communities are doing and how we support health and wellness um, in our current environment. Um, and a uh, year out, October 6th through 8th, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, looking forward to seeing everyone there. Certainly, again, not happening this year. We're going to be virtual, but looking forward to seeing everybody in uh, Albuquerque um, in 2021. Next slide. Um, it gives me great pleasure today to introduce Emily Shore um, as our today's presenter on the webinar. Um, I am fortunate to be able to call her a colleague here at RMC Health. Um, she is one of our lead professional learning facilitators, and she focuses on creating a culture of health and wellness uh, for K-12 education systems. Um, she does a ton of facilitation, uh, skills-based uh, learning opportunities uh, for district and school level folk, um, and really uh, thinking about uh, building sustainability for health promoting practices and infrastructure, um, as well as a smattering of other things. Um, but that, that's her focus and her passion. Um, and before working here at RMC Health, um, Emily was with the Foundation for Sustainable Urban Communities as the Director of Healthy Schools for the Be Well Health and Wellness Initiative. And she worked alongside communities to promote healthy living and partnering with school districts, uh, staff, administrators, parents, students, students, and community members. Uh, so certainly that community-based focus as well as part of her, her work. Um, in addition to presenting webinars such as this, Emily has presented across the country, um, locally and nationally, um, at a variety of forums. And she is a uh, CSU grad, um, that's where she did her undergrad work, and has her master's of public health uh, from the Colorado School of Public Health. And as I said, I'm, I'm honored and delighted to call her my colleague and look forward to learning with her and alongside all of you on today's webinar. So, Emily, it's all yours. Okay, thank you so so much, Cheryl, for that lovely introduction. So um, y'all learned a little bit about me, but I want to learn a little bit about you before we jump in. So as you'll see, there are two prompts on your screen right now. The first is to go ahead and introduce yourself by sharing your organization name and which state uh, you live in, you reside in. And then the second is in just a moment, Caitlin will pull up on the screen a poll. And I want you to think about what best describes your role promoting health and wellness in schools. So Caitlin, you can go ahead and put the poll up. Connecticut, Illinois, DC, Ohio, Michigan. Oh, I love seeing where everyone is joining in from. New York, Ohio, Kentucky. Go ahead and keep populating into the chat so we can 
Healthy, where all of you are joining us from, all the fabulous organizations that you work for or represent. Hawaii, New Jersey, Welcome to all of you from across the nation. Oh my gosh, Hawaii and Alaska, amazing, amazing. New Mexico, fantastic. So go ahead and keep populating into the chat and then don't forget to complete the poll. You've got about 10 more seconds to select what best describes your role promoting school health and wellness. All right, we are going to go ahead and close the poll. The majority of you have responded. Um, if you can just leave the poll results up there, Caitlin, so we can see where everyone is coming from. So thank you all for introducing yourselves in the chat box. It's great to see so many school health advocates from across the nation on this webinar. As you can see from our poll, the majority of you are working at a nonprofit or a public health organization. And in your role, you're partnering with schools and districts to promote health and wellness. We also have a handful that work at a state or a federal, federal organization. So you may provide some financial support, some trainings or some resources, either within your state or nationally, um, as well as a few of you that are working directly in schools. So directly with students, directly with families or at the district to support schools. Um, and then a small handful also working at an institution of higher education. So thank you all so much. Um, as you'll learn later today, everyone has a role in promoting health and wellness. And after today's webinar, I hope that you feel confident supporting schools in your state with specific health and wellness issues. So we are going to go ahead and get started. We can end that poll and I will go on to the next slide. So I would like to officially welcome you all to today's webinar, the whole school, whole community, whole child model from framework to practical application. You'll notice that throughout the rest of the webinar, I am going to refer to the whole school, whole community, whole child model as the WISC model for abbreviation. So as Cheryl mentioned, my name is Emily Shore and I'm a lead professional learning facilitator from RMC Health, which is located in Lakewood, Colorado. If you haven't come to Colorado, once traveling is safe, again, I encourage you to come check out our great state. Um, RMC Health is a nonprofit organization providing professional learning and capacity building that empowers champions for healthy young people, that's all of you wonderful people on this webinar. You are a champion so that students of every background can live their best lives. So the objectives for today's webinar were posted on the website and they are going to be here on your screen. The first is how to identify how the WISC model supports positive health outcomes and academic success for all students. And our second objective for our time together is to integrate the WISC framework to address a specific health and wellness issue. So in order to meet those objectives in this webinar, our agenda is as follows. We are in the welcome and opening right now, and we're gonna do another poll as a warm-up activity in just a couple of slides. Then we're gonna jump into the WISC model, including the 10 components of school health that support positive health outcomes and the five whole child tenants that support academic success. And we'll also spend a little bit of time talking about coordination and community in the model. We'll look at the model um, through the lens of one issue. Um, and, that, and then after that, you'll have a chance to actually vote on a second issue in which I'll demonstrate how you can integrate the framework to address that issue. So it's gonna be a little bit of a choose your own adventure towards the end of the webinar. At the very end, I'll share some WISC resources that were created by our organization, RMC Health, in partnership with a local partner, actually Colorado State University. And then we'll close um, with an open forum with question and answer. 
um, and take up the remaining amount of time in the webinar doing that. So as part of our opening, I'd like to share some group agreements. These agreements will support how we engage with each other for our time together today. So the agreements are, one, everyone has something to contribute. We all come from various backgrounds. We have varied expertise, varied experience supporting school health. And so no matter if your experience is a little or a lot, I would encourage you to contribute in the conversation and you can do this via the chat box. Which brings me to our next agreement, everyone is a learner. So everyone's job is to learn and pick up one new nugget of information from today's webinar. I hope that you engage as a learner, you can explore what you don't understand, and you can certainly ask questions, which leads to the third group agreement. All questions are valued and welcome. Please type your questions into the chat box. Cheryl is going to be helping me by monitoring the chat. If there is a specific question on a specific slide, she's gonna stop me and I'm gonna do my best to answer it but also remember that I've saved time at the very end for question and answer. So if your question can wait, I encourage you um, to save it for that open forum. And then last but certainly, certainly not least uh, for our group agreements is participation is encouraged. So there will be several opportunities for you all to share your ideas in the chat box and to complete polls, trying to make this as interactive as possible given the virtual platform that we're on. So please participate in these opportunities. It will not only enhance your learning, but it will enhance the learning of your peers. So if you could please write agree in the chat box if you will use these agreements to engage with your peers today. Emily, while people are doing that and before it slides from the chat, we did get a question that uh, if you want to keep in the back of your mind as you're walking us through the WISC model uh, around differentiating between um, multi-tiered systems of support, so MTSS and the WISC model, and how um, the question specifically is, can one be implemented into another and sort of how those two frameworks uh, may work together. So if, if, if there's a moment in time as you're going through, um, if not, we will address that at the end. Absolutely, yes. And so I know that there are many models out there. There are many frameworks that schools can use. Um, MTSS is very popular um, as is the WISC model. And so there is a little bit of overlap um, and I'll try to address that in the slides. But if I don't address that question in its entirety, if you wouldn't mind bringing it up again at the end. And thank you to everyone that agrees um, to our group agreements. So for, as a warm up for today's session, I want you to think about how familiar are you with the WISC model? Do you know all of the components? Do you regu regularly implement or support implementation of the model? So a poll should have just appeared on your screen for you to select an answer to this question. And there is no right or wrong answer. So how familiar are you with the WISC model? About half of you have participated in the poll. I'm gonna wait for that participation to get up a little bit. All right, Caitlin, let's go ahead and close the poll and look at our results. So most of you are somewhat familiar. So you know some of the model components, but you may not know how to support the implementation of it. And some of you are a little bit more familiar in that you partially support implementation of the model in your school or state. So the WISC model really provides a framework to create a healthy environment in schools thereby improving the learning and health outcomes of all students. The model relies on leveraging resources, interdisciplinary collaboration, and community involvement. Therefore, because of this collaboration and community involvement, everyone can play a part in the implementation of the model in their school or in their state. And so if you were one of those people that selected you're not at all familiar or you're somewhat familiar, um, I hope that by the end of today, you'll become a little bit more familiar. And if you are already familiar with it, I hope you learn a new strategy or a new idea for implementation that you can share back at your organization. So thank you all for completing the second poll. So as I mentioned, the WISC model provides a framework to improve learning and health outcomes for all students. 
The model emphasizes on the coordination of school policies, school processes, and school practices, and implementation of the model positively affects our children and youth at school, at home, and in their community. So let's take a look at the model now because there were some people who were not at all familiar with it, and I want to make sure we all have a common understanding of the model. So here's the model. The model is centered around a child, which is our students, and it fosters a comprehensive approach to address numerous health behaviors and issues that are affecting our students today. There are many health behaviors and many health issues we know our schools and our districts are struggling with across the nation, from bullying and violence in schools, to substance use, misuse and addiction, to the rising mental health crisis and rates of suicide, to physical inactivity and sedentary time in school, and to challenges that are challenges in creating safe and supportive learning environments or positive school climates. So to begin our time together today, I've selected one of those issues to serve as an example as we think through the WISC model, and that issue is going to be bullying. But before we jump into the issue of bullying, I want to make sure we all have a common understanding around the 10 components of school health. So as I mentioned, the model relies on interdisciplinary collaboration, and this collaboration needs to exist between the 10 components listed here on the screen in order to meet the needs of and support each child. When these components start working together, they will support positive health outcomes. So we're going to review the 10 components of school health. And while I do this, I want you to start thinking about how this relates to your own work and how it could relate to our example issue of bullying in order to support positive health outcomes. So the blue ring in the model shows the 10 components of school health. The first one is health education, which describes the formal instruction that students receive at school where they learn content and they practice skills that they need to live healthy lives. They should be learning content one third of the time and then practicing these skills at school two thirds of the time. Next is physical education and physical activity. And this refers to the comprehensive programming amongst staff, amongst family, community, and students to provide times of movement before school, during school, and after school. Nutrition environment and services. Many times when people think of this, they think of the cafeteria and the school meal program, but it is much more than that. Nutrition environment and services includes teaching healthy eating through nutrition education, but also having consistent messages about healthy eating choices and providing healthy food and beverage options for students. These options can be through vending machines, concession stands, school stores, food carts, a la carte, the cafeteria, and should also be considered in the classroom environment for classroom parties, celebrations, and fundraisers. The next component is health services. Many times people think of nursing when they think of health services. And health services is more than nursing, it's all encompassing um, and includes first aid, emergency care in the school, the management of students' chronic conditions, such as asthma or food allergies or diabetes. Health services includes screenings, so hearing screenings, vision screenings, BMI screenings, as well as referrals to providers based on those screening results. Then there's counseling, psychological, and social services, which supports the mental, behavioral, and social and emotional health of students. This is done similarly through health services where there is an assessment to be done on a child, then possibly an intervention and a referral to support services. These referrals can be within the school or district, as well as externally to partners. Our next component is social and emotional climate. And this refers to how students engage in school and how they relate to staff and other students. So what is being done in the climate to increase interactions between staff and their peers. And then we have the physical environment, referring to the physical condition of a school, especially in terms of safety. 
So thinking about the land as well as the hallways and the classrooms. Next is employee wellness, which is twofold. Employee wellness is about fostering the health of staff to increase employee effectiveness and productivity. So what specific policies, practices, and programs are in place for employees' own health and wellness benefits, as well as how are employees serving as healthy role models to the students in the school building? An example I always like to give for this one is if you have a practice around um, drinking uh, water throughout the day, it's important that your employees are also drinking water. So if you're encouraging your students to drink water, you're also drinking water. You don't have a sugary sweetened beverage or an energy drink on your desk, but you're role modeling the healthy behavior for students. And then we have family engagement, which is working together with families to support their students, their children in learning and development, followed by community involvement, which is our last component here that encourages partnerships between a school and other community groups. These community groups could be local businesses, universities, government agencies, or really any other organization that supports students. So I want to get a sense of which components are represented on this webinar. So consider the support that you provide to your schools or the support that you provide to your state in terms of health and wellness. A poll will appear on your screen in just a moment and I want you to select the component area or component areas that you provide support in. You should be able to select more than one. Got about a little over half of you that have participated. Give you about 10 more seconds to cast your votes. How do you support health and wellness? Which component area do you operate or work in the most? All right, Caitlin, we can go ahead and close the poll. Let's look at our results here. So we've got health education. Um, the majority of you are either health educators or you support health education because you are a community partner or an organization that supports uh, your schools or your district or your state at 78%. Um, and then uh, we've got a bunch of others in the 40 to 50%. I just wanna make sure, oh, it's not letting me scroll down, Caitlin. I don't know if I can see. Uh, you may poll. be able to expand if you hover over the window. Let's see. Well, it's not letting me expand. Mostly I just wanted to know, was there any component area that had 0%? And it doesn't look nope. like it on my screen. <laughs> nope. Okay. I mean, there's something in all of the categories. All right. So we have a very well-rounded group of participants here on this webinar. Um, and because of that, we're going to get a chance to learn from each other in our next activity, um, where we use the issue of bullying to look at it through the WISC model. So I'm going to close out of our poll here. If it will let me close out. Oh, technology. It's not letting me close out, Caitlin. Can you see the X to close the screen or? There's not an option to do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know, I can only share the results or relaunch it. Can you move the box out of the way at least so you can see your slides? I'm trying, but it only moves my slides. Sorry, huh. folks. Just a little bit of a technical glitch here. Uh, why don't you try stopping sharing your screen and restarting? Okay, I will do that real quick.
Still the same? Yep. And you aren't able to move the poll. Oh, wait, there we go. Okay. Are we back? We're back in business, everybody. Whew. Thanks for your grace. Okay, so as I was saying, it's now time to acknowledge your experience and your expertise that you bring from all of those 10 components of school health. So for each component area around the WISP model, I'm going to ask you to think about what you do to create positive health outcomes around the issue of bullying. So for those of you that selected health education, what is it that you do within health education or what have you done to create positive health outcomes around bullying? You can go ahead and type your responses into the chat box. So oh, I have um, doing focus groups, working with students to promote bullying prevention, teaching lessons on interpersonal communication, so a health skill, health standard, a lot of education, a lot of teaching, social skills, empathy, doing skills-based health education, right, which we talked about is super important that your content is a third of the time and skills are two thirds of the time. Social and emotional learning classes that are specific to bullying. Awesome, so you can go ahead and keep populating your responses into the chat and I encourage you as peers to read what others are doing. I see a lot of teaching and a lot of skill space. So in addition to what was shared in the chat box, or I guess to rather reinforce what some of you have shared, here's a couple of examples. So within health education, educators can teach students assertive communication strategies to set boundaries for how they want to and do not want to be treated. So that's the, the teaching component and somebody talked about um, SEL and um, health within health education as well as educators can teach students problem solving skills to avoid aggressive or harmful responses to conflict and then allow students to practice these skills. So I think all of you um, pretty much put that into the chat box. So you um, picked up that it should be teaching content as well as allowing practice time. And continue to read what your peer responses are because there's a lot of really great ideas in the chat box. So let's go to the next component. For those of you um, who support health and wellness within the physical education, physical activity component, I want you to think about what do you do or what have you done to create positive health outcomes around bullying? And go ahead and type into the chat box. So there is a um, 15 minute social run or jog. So to build relationships within the class community as a form of physical activity, team building games, absolutely. I know there were a bunch of you that selected physical education, physical activity. Maybe you're just trying to think in terms of bullying. So uh, cooperative skills challenges. Absolutely, challenged by choice. Allowing students to bond in supportive environments. Things that promote cooperation. Awesome, go ahead and keep populating those. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples that we had. So in addition to what's shared in the chat box, equip you with a few more um, strategies here on the WISC model. So for physical education and physical activity, our educators can design and implement lessons where all athletic abilities are valued. So we can try to prevent bullying by doing that, as well as facilitating lessons with non-elimination games. And I think a couple of people um, wrote that in the chat, making sure that we have really supported safe time. I see something about recess as well, so yes, Lots and lots of good strategies there. All right, you're going to get the flow of this real quick. So now for those of you that have selected the nutrition environment and services component as a component in which you support or work in, I want you to think about what you 
do or what you have done to support positive health outcomes around bullying. And you can go ahead and type your responses into the chat box. Ooh, a mix it up day at lunch. Michelle, I would love for you to type a little bit more description or detail. That sounds exciting and something that I would want to do in Colorado schools, but I don't know what it means. So bringing healthy fruit snacks for students, creating positive and safe environments in the school cafeteria. Susan, if you have an example of that, I'd love to see a specific example. Culturally responsive taste testing, absolutely. Now the, now the comments are coming in so fast, it's hard to keep up with them. Don't yuck my yum mantra. I have heard that um, in many states. So kind of having a um, group norm or a classroom agreement around don't yuck my yum. Taste testing with students. Encouraging students to sit with someone they don't know. Yeah, keep it up here. I'm going to give you a couple more examples. So within nutrition environment and services, something you can do is um, the school can implement practices that reduce the stigma for reduced cost meals. Um, that can help address bullying as well as, and somebody saw this in the chat, facilitating students sitting with multiple different peer groups at lunch or other meal times. So encouraging them to engage with others that aren't exactly like them. There are so many great ideas in the chat. I love this. Thank you all for sharing. We're going to go to health services, which there were a lot of you for health services. So for those of you that selected health services, what is it that you do or have done to create positive health outcomes around bullying? You all know what to do by now. Those of you in health services, make your contributions to the chat box. And yes, Stephanie captured um, one of the strategies we had on the last screen. So free food to reduce the stigma. Um, Susan, thanks for sharing the idea of teachers sitting with their students, engaging with their students at mealtime. What can be done in health services to create a positive health outcome? So having skits, student written skits about bullying and possibly having health services professionals help with that. Nurses um, teaching nutrition to students and different medical conditions that students may be experiencing, as well as food allergies, I might add on. School nurses looking for anxiety symptoms that might come off as a physical symptom for bullying. I'm going to show you all a couple that we have here. You can go ahead and keep typing into the chat. So in addition to what was shared in the chat box, within school health services, personnel can provide stress coping strategies as a, as a part of a routine health service. So I shared some of those routine health services might be hearing screenings, vision screenings, BMI screenings. So at those screenings, at those services, providing stress coping strategies to all students, as well as adding some additional screenings for aggressive behaviors and signs of bullying. And then furthermore, within health services, um, establishing a conf confidential data system that can track and analyze bullying incidents over time. So sc school nurses could help with that tracking system um, in partnership with the front office or leadership or administrators. Lots of great responses in the chat. I'm getting distracted by your responses. Everyone is so great. Okay, counseling, psychological, and social services, you are now up. So what is it that you do or have done to create a positive health outcome around bullying? Go ahead and answer in the chat box so we can all learn from one another. As a reminder, one of our group agreements is that everyone is a learner, and that includes myself as the presenter and the facilitator. So I am also learning from all of you. 
a peer meditation program, peer mentors, ally groups, teaching guidance lessons on bullying, active listening. What else can counselors or social workers do? A P3 group, positive peer pressure student led. So I think some of the common ones were peer groups, peer mentors, peer programs, an anonymous box to report incidents. Yes, that is actually a best practice to prevent bullying. So making sure that you have an anonymous tip box um, available to students at all times. And then of course, having counselors or social workers go through that tip box um, and look at some of the uh, information that was provided directly from students. I'm going to show you a few more that we have here. So within the counseling, psychological and social services, school personnel can teach students the observable signs of bullying and how to effectively seek support, including teaching students how to report bullying to trusted adults, to hotlines or to that tip box that we just talked about. Um, they should learn that they can report bullying to a trusted adult that may be within the school community or outside of the school community. And then additionally, within this component, personnel can provide group or individual interventions to build skills that regulate emotions and thoughts and behaviors in different and age appropriate situations. I also think that could be done through some of the peer groups that you all mentioned in the chat box. So social and emotional climate. For those of you that selected social and emotional climate, what do you do? within this climate to create positive health outcomes around bullying? Go ahead and answer the question in the chat box. So classroom management programs, not sure if that was for the last one or this one. LGBT allyship and support by staff and students. present in spaces where kids are passing so that you can listen, you can observe, and you can um, act on those teachable moments. Doing SEL curriculum and activities, so social and emotional learning curriculum and activities, yes. Teaching students about mindfulness, doing trauma-informed practices, yes, keep them coming. So in addition, and to reinforce what you have in the chat box within the social and emotional climate, schools can assess the social and emotional competencies, so such as self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, responsible decision making. Um, the school can integrate the explicit teaching of social and emotional skills into curriculum and provide students time to practice these newly learned and acquired skills in a safe environment. And I think Many of you mentioned SEL, many of you mentioned um, making sure that the environment is safe, and you'll also see some other um, curriculums and mention of LGBTQ+, um, so making sure that it's a really safe space for, for students. And it looks like my screen froze. I'm not able to advance. <laughs> Technology. Okay, here we go. Physical environment. So those of you that uh, work in the physical environment to support schools, how can you create positive outcomes around bullying? Let's go ahead and have you type your responses into the chat. So SE, are LCL skills the same as health education skills? So um, CASEL, C-A-S-E-L, has um, SEL skills and they overlap a lot with um, the um, health skills, the National Health Education Standards. So there is some overlap there. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but um, we can send out a resource on um, the CASEL SEL skills in connection to health ed. I know there, there was a recent resource created by um, Shape America. So let me just jot that down in case we don't have time to come back to it at the end.
Okay, and so we've got um, being present in the hallway during passing periods, creating safe spaces, decorating the school with posters and post-it notes and sidewalk chalk. Yes, absolutely. So um, we have many of the same examples here on the screen. So um, we have, you know, the same as you using visuals, um, but you can also communicate your expectations around bullying-free environments. So posting those visuals in bathrooms, on ball fields, in the cafeteria, stationing staff in the hallways or other common areas where there is a potential for bullying um, and doing a positive intervention there. You all mentioned that in the chat. And then the last one is sealing off secluded areas so students, staff, and visitors feel more secure on school grounds. All right, we have just a few more components. So employee wellness is the next one. Those of you that support employee wellness, what is it that you do or have done to create a positive health outcome around bullying for employees? Self-care for employees, absolutely. Remember that employee wellness is about the health and wellness of the employees, but also what do they do to role model, staff development trainings that would certainly support them as well as how they role model to their students, professional development, absolutely. So you all have named them. So providing trainings or giving resources to staff, this could be specific to recognizing and responding to bullying in personal and professional settings as well as encouraging all staff, member, staff members to model and reinforce healthy communication and what healthy relationships look like within and between each other as employees and also with their students. We've got two components left here, family engagement. What do you do, what have you done within the family engagement component to create a positive health outcome around bullying? Go ahead and put it in the chat. There were many other responses to employee wellness about empowerment, programs that per staff can participate in, weekly Wednesday wellness tips, yes. What about families? Educational programs for families, certainly. Communicating with our families, educating our families. community presentations, yep, and sometimes that dips into our community involvement component. So let's take a look at family engagement here. We have two strategies here within family engagement. A school can create communication channels to share the bullying prevention skills that students are learning at school with their families. This can be done through newsletters, websites, social media, as well as a school can provide take-home activities or homework assignments for families and students to practice bullying prevention and their social and emotional skills together at home. And I see newsletters in the chat. And some of you have talked about community groups and presentations. So let's go on to the last component area, which is community involvement. Those of you that selected community involvement in that poll, what is it that you've done or in the past or currently do to create a positive health outcome around bullying? And many of you have mentioned community partnerships, partnerships with community groups, presentations from community partners, guest speakers, partner with local public health on bullying to display messages at their sites. So that's that consistent messaging between a school and um, the places that young people frequent in the community and making sure that anti-bullying practices and messaging is the same no matter where they go. Yep, keep them coming. So here's what we have as a couple examples. So within community involvement, a school can create opportunities um, in guiding, delivering, and or tracking bullying initiatives, and then making sure to align policies and practices with after school providers. So if you have a YMCA or a Boys and Girls Club, whatever the, bu whatever the bullying policies are at school could mirror what they are in the after school providers. 
Excellent. Thank you all so much for participating. So we just identified how the WISP model supports positive health outcomes by individual component area. We're going to look at how the WISP model supports academic success by tenant. So in the green ring uh, around the student are the five tenants of the whole child. They are healthy, safe, engaged, supported, and challenged. Healthy is the first one, meaning students will enter school healthy and learn about a healthy practice and lifestyle. We know that emotionally and physically healthy students do better in school. Safe means that each student will learn in an environment that is physically and emotionally safe. Many of you mentioned some of the safe practices that you can do in the chat box. Students who feel safe are going to concentrate better and are more likely to connect with their te teachers and with their peers. Being engaged means that each student is actively engaged in their learning and feels connected to the school and the broader community. Students who feel valued as a part of their school community perform better academically, so that connection to academic success. Supported means that each student has access to personalized learning and is supported by qualified caring adults. Students who have an adult take a personal interest in them are less likely to drop out less likely to engage in negative behavior and less likely to feel isolated. Many of you put strategies in the chat about um, how adults can um, be more caring towards students through post-it notes and kindness messages and kindness boards. I thought that was amazing. And then challenge means each student is challenged academically and that they graduate college or career ready. So I'm just going to go through the next part of the WISP model pretty quick. Um, there's a white ring that's between the five whole child tenants and the 10 components. And this white ring is the coordination of policies, processes, and practices. And it really helps put the model into action to lead to that improved learning and health outcome. Coordination is um, among the component areas, as I mentioned, and among the community is critical. It provides a way for a school to leverage resources, reduce duplication of efforts and programs, and fill in any gaps um, to address priorities that a school or a district has. And one of the best strategies for establishing coordination is to expand an existing committee or create a committee or team that has representation from as many of the WISC components as possible. The work is not meant to be on the shoulders of any one teacher, any one nurse, any one department or profession. It really is a whole school approach with every child and every student playing a role. And lastly, we have the outside yellow ring representing the community. Remember that schools are part of a community and support from the community is essential. Schools will be more effective and will accomplish more when there are community collaborations that connect to each of the 10 components. So even though community involves Involvement is one component area. Think about the people that you can partner with to support each component area for a specific issue. This could be um, many of the organizations that you all are here representing, hospitals, businesses, health departments, social service entities, um, and more, Parks and Rec, law enforcement, faith-based organizations. So as previously mentioned, we know schools and districts struggle with a variety of health and wellness issues, and we just shared individual strategies across the 10 components to address bullying. And now we want to look at how we can comprehensively integrate the framework to address another issue. So I'm gonna teach you how to do that. To address an issue, you first start with putting the health behavior in the center of the model. You'll see that displayed here on the screen. For example, if my school or district wanted to look at physical activity rates, we would put that in the center of the model and think about how to integrate it comprehensively across all of the components. So after you've put your health behavior in the center of the model, you wanna think about how can each of the 10 component areas support positive health outcomes for your issue. So to do this, you'll examine the policies that are already in place at the school and then look at the practices and programs to support those policies. You'll want to consider the education that needs to be taught. So many of you um, put into the chat box around bullying, what needs to be taught to students, taught to staff, as well as consider school-wide prevention and intervention strategies. So um, that's a little bit of MTSS. So we want to make sure that everyone has, um, you know, kind of that, that universal amount of knowledge and support. And then um, as it tears up for prevention and intervention, um, you can address that for um, specified populations within your school community. 
So then after these initial considerations are in place, then you brainstorm issue specific practices across all 10 components of the WISC model and you write these around the outside of the model. To support academic achievement, you'll consider what's already in place in your environment that supports academic success and then what could be feasibly added to the environment to ensure that students are healthy, safe, engaged, supported, and challenged. To support coordination and community, remember that's the white ring and the yellow uh, wrap of community around the model. I mentioned you partner with various groups and you do this to reinforce healthy messages and or to receive supplemental support. So remember that a school is not solely responsible for the issue in which they are trying to address. The community also plays a role in integrating this framework. So we're gonna do a really quick poll. It's gonna appear on your screen and you get to choose your own adventure. So choose a health behavior or issue that you would like to see integrated into the WISC model for the remaining amount of time. Your um, issues to choose from are physical activity, substance use, suicide, um, or how to create a positive school climate. Question in the chat if the slides will be available. I can absolutely send a copy of the slides to Caitlin and she can send them out in the follow-up email. So let me make a note um, for that. All right, Caitlin, because we're getting short on time and I wanna make sure that we honor everyone's um, time here and that we end as close as possible um, in the next eight or nine minutes, I'm gonna have you end the poll. And because 41% of you chose to create a positive school climate, I am going to flip to that slide in my slide deck now I will say, those of you that are interested in the other topics, I will give you some resources on those topics and how you can integrate the WISC model. So fear not, you'll get that as a resource for me in the follow-up, but for our remaining time, we're gonna focus on creating a positive school climate. So as I said, the votes are in. We're gonna see how you can integrate this WISC model to address school climate. Again, following these steps, you can see that the issue is laid out in the middle of the model. This is an abbreviated model. It just has the 10 components of school health. Before you get started with the brainstorming, you'll wanna consider existing policies, practices, what education needs to be taught, and finally, what prevention and intervention strategies can support your policies and practices. Once you have those considerations complete, you then start to brainstorm issue-specific practices in this case, the issue is school climate, creating a positive school climate across the 10 components. And you actually write those um, practices around the WISC model so that you can be sure that you're comprehensively addressing the issue. So on this slide, I wanna preface it with two things. I'm gonna go relatively fast so we can end on time and the font is small. I don't expect you to be able to read at everything right now or capture everything. So all of this information in this example, um, as well as the other examples that weren't selected by popular vote will be shared in a resource document. So let's go ahead and get started. So within school climate, we're gonna look at how to comprehensively address it. So we put school climate in the middle of the model and we're gonna work our way around it. So for health education, integrating explicit teaching of pro-social behavior and allowing students the opportunity to practice these behaviors, as well as explicitly teaching social and emotional competencies. For physical education and physical activity, creating games and activities where students across all abilities can interact and connect with each other is one strategy, as well as supporting students to set physical activity goals for themselves and these schools should really focus on their strengths and their abilities. And then lastly, encouraging peer-to-peer -peer support so that students are engaged and participating. So this peer-to-peer -peer support can be in a physical education class, and it can also be at recess or other movement opportunities throughout the day. Within nutrition and environment and services, inviting staff to eat lunch with students can help build school connectedness. So this could be one day per week, a teacher is gonna act, interact with their students at lunch and they choose the day. Um, another way is to advise students to socialize with different peer groups at mealtime, so kind of a mix and meal opportunity. 
And then the last one is to provide opportunities for students to share their opinion on current food offerings. So for the school meals, for the concessions, for the a la carte, for the grab and goes, really getting students involved um, to create a positive school climate. For health services, uh, prioritizing relationship building as a part of any health service, universally screening for behavioral and mental health, and then providing the supports as needed. Again, those supports can be within a school or district or externally with partners. And then creating and posting materials that communicate available student resources and the different ways that students can seek these resources in order to reduce the st stigma around mental health. Counseling, psychological, and social services, um, providing individualized interventions for students who struggle to meet behavioral expectations or group interventions to build and strengthen relationships relationship skills, as well as establishing a mentoring program based on the needs of your school community. An example could be a mentoring uh, system that connects students from different grades and different backgrounds to interact with one another. Social and emotional climate, so facilitating conversations with students on topics relating to academics, emotions, classroom expectations, ensuring that teachers have lesson plans to teach social and emotional skills. We can't expect all of our teachers to have those plans. And so working with them to develop the plans can really help them when they teach the skills. And then preventing harassment, bullying, and violence through education policies and practices. In the physical environment, you can establish a designated central gathering spot for students to socialize and connect with each other. This should be a safe spot, a well-lit spot, um, a frequently trafficked spot by staff, as well as using visuals throughout the school to communicate academic and behavioral expectations and performing regular building maintenance. So changing light bulbs, painting the interior and the exterior, maintaining the landscaping, picking up trash, as well as maintaining organized classrooms. For employee wellness, encouraging school personnel to model healthy social and emotional behaviors and relationships across the school community as well as we want to make sure that we are doing activities for staff, so planning well-being activities that improve their morale and their engagement. For family engagement, communicating the school's student behavioral expectations to families. This could be in a variety of communication formats and methods. Regularly serving families for their perceptions and suggestions about the school climate. So you saw in nutrition environment, we were having students surveyed and students providing their thoughts, we also want to do the same thing for families. And last but not least, community involvement. So coordinating referral systems with community health providers um, and crisis response units. It can be as well as educating adults in the community to volunteer at the school to help build supportive relationships um, and building that overall um, sense of belonging and connectedness that respects different cultures and doing that with your community partners. So we are about out of time. So I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, I would share some resources and I wanna make sure that you get those. So RMC Health in collaboration with the Colorado State University Research Prevention Center created five issue briefs highlighting some of the issues shared today, including bullying prevention, substance use, physical activity, suicide, and creating a positive school climate. Each issue brief was distilled from a comprehensive, systematic, and rigorous review of relevant research, and it includes a description of the issue, disproportionate effects of the issue, what schools can do to address the issue, example strategies for aligning and coordinating specific practices across all 10 component areas, next steps, and some example programs that are proven to be effective in schools to address that issue. And you will see that MTSS is one of the frameworks or programs for school climate. So here I'm gonna have Caitlin pop the link um, into the chat box. So you'll see a hyperlink to RMC Health's resources and tools page. And what you do when you click that link is you're gonna scroll down and look for infrastructure um, for district and school health. And then there, if you scroll down, you will find all five issue briefs that you can open the PDF and save it to your personal computer or share it with some of your partners and schools. 
So our objectives for today to wrap up were to identify how the WISC model supports positive health outcomes and academic success for students. And we did this through the bullying example, as well as integrate the WISC framework to address a specific health and wellness issue that you all got to choose, which is creating a positive school climate. As we close out, I want you to take um, a moment to write one next step that you will take as a result of attending this webinar. This is your last opportunity to pop into the chat box. It could be to implement an action strategy that was shared, research the WISP model in more depth, contact me if I didn't answer your question because we were short on time. And thank you all um, for the compliments on the great information and presentation. You will, of course, get the issue brief resources link as well as the slides and the follow up. Love seeing some of your action steps. Um, unfortunately, we ran out of time for specific questions. However, I'm going to leave my personal contact or my work contact information up here. So my email is emilys at rmc.org. If you have a specific question, feel free to email me. Um, I can also hop on webcam and chat with you more about the WISC model in your specific school, district, or state. So thank you so much. I'm gonna, just gonna turn it to Cheryl for a closing slide or two about ASHA, and then you all will be on your way. Uh, Bant with me one more, please. Yes. Um, so I mentioned continuing education, which is one of the benefits of being a member. Um, they will be, uh, members receive free, um, and you may obtain your uh, continuing education credits by com completing the webinar evaluation uh, that will go out after this uh, webinar. So be on the lookout for that. And I think I've got one more slide um, to plug some additional upcoming webinars that are being hosted. Uh, Food Allergy 101 on, in August, uh, Breast Health and how to get in and the Get in Touch Foundation in September. Oh, we got two in September. Um, and the second one in September, Engaging Youth in the Comprehensive School Physical Activity Program. I was looking at the chat. Uh, there's some, you know, definitely some questions about how we do that in our current uh, environment and, and making sure that our students still have access to PA um, and physical activity. So um, flip. Put those markers on calendar. We look forward to seeing you and uh, you can access anything else uh, from the web. Um, so be in touch and thank you for joining us today. And thank you all for hanging on three minutes past our closing. Um, there was just so many great ideas in the chat. I wanted to share them all and we spent a lot of time learning from one another uh, and being really engaged today. So thank you all so much for being engaged. I hope you have a lovely rest of your week and I look forward to connecting with any of you that uh, that want to reach out to me. I'm here to help and look forward to connecting with you further. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you both Emily and Cheryl.